Yeah, look, uh, on, his, uh, on his side, it says 2010. ODI camp was, first one was in 2012. Uh, yeah, T20 camp. So that was his first 2010 Pakistan. So uh, 40 ODIs, 31 T20s so far. Congratulations, you're back in the black caps. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an always an honour to play for the country. Yeah, always a thrill to hear your name. Yeah, yeah, it always is. Uh, sort of, I guess, been in and out um, over a wee while now, but it's always, yeah, it's always nice to hear your name uh, be involved with the team. Look, I was thinking uh, when we saw uh, you, you, your name pop up there that in 2014, I remember when I went back to Radio Sport, very first show we did, you'd just been whipping down Thunderbolts at Eden Park at 150, and I can't remember who you were playing. I think it was we were playing Sri Lanka or something like that. It seems so long ago, and I suppose the tragedy of it is is that you haven't actually played nearly as much as what we've all wanted you to play and what you would have wanted to play. No, no, definitely not. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's, yeah, I guess fast bowling can be um, a bit like that, and we've obviously had guys in the past with the likes of Bondi and and others that have probably haven't played as many games as, as we would have liked to have seen. So um, part of it's, you know, just taking a new stride and obviously a bit disappointing, but just trying to keep, make my way back and, and keep fighting to, to get back on the team. How hard is that, mate, when you're actually, you know, you get injured and you, oh, bugger, it's happened again. How hard is it to keep getting back on the horse, going through the rehab? Yeah, it definitely uh, packs a bit of a mental toll and, you know, you need right people around you to help sort of, um, push it back and and keep sort of striving to get back um, and also a, a fair bit of, sort of resilience in yourself to just try, know that you know um, if you can put in the work and, and get back you know you're, you're good enough to, to be able to play at that level How fast can you still bowl? <laughs> I don't know I haven't bowled in a game for a while now so <laughs> I have to wait and see hopefully I get a couple of couple of runs in this T20 series to start and um we can see how it goes. Uh, going to be a tough opponent, all right, aren't we? I mean, you know, we both got to the semi final. Both our countries got to the semi finals of that T20 World Cup, so it's pretty damn timely. Yeah, definitely, India. Um, you know, great squad. Um, you know, some of the some of the big names are, aren't coming, but um, the depth that they have in their cricket, you know, they're just producing world class talent, and you know, they easily field two, three sides that have got um, quality, quality players. As the best before you, you're 30 years old now, mate. Does that, is that old? I don't know. <laughs> don't know. Not, <laughs> is the best uh, before you no, still? I think, so. I, think, I think I've still got um, a lot le- left to give. Um, I guess in terms of overs bold, my body is probably not as old as, as others at, at 30, but um, I definitely feel like I've, I've still got a, a good few years left in me. Okay, and also the opportunity there because obviously with Trent and he hasn't got his New Zealand contract anymore, he's got big bash to play and everything else. So is it a matter of taking advantage of this? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and obviously, um, you know, Trent sort of just stepping away for a little bit to to take up some opportunities and, and spend some time at home gives you know other guys chances in the squad to to play some games and and prove what they can do. Well, it's only in October that you played, so it hasn't actually been that long ago. So, roaring to go this Friday. Hopefully, you get named on Friday. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to get a run out. And then, of course, the one day is after that. So, is it in your mind you want to play both the 20s and the 50s? Yeah, definitely. Yep. I think just at the moment, looking for these first T20s and, and, and hopefully play some games and get the body through those and then. Look, uh, look towards the the one day as post that. Okay, and also you still, get, I mean, they're still picking you up at the IPL, mate. So you're obviously bowling well when you're bowling. <laughs> yeah, I've sort of been fortunate enough that sort of in between the injuries, I've managed to play a little bit overseas and some some leagues around like the hundred and, and the blast and, and things like that, and and have done relatively well. It sort of keeps. Um, keeps me ticking over, which is nice. All right. Well, it's always, you know, it's always great to hear your name because there's nothing like somebody that can come in and bowl as fast as you can. So, fingers crossed that you know your body holds together and everything. Great to see you back in a black shirt, mate. Thank you very much. All right, then. His name is Craig Cumming. He does join us to talk matters cricket. And he damn well should too. Yeah, really good old mate. And not a bad talkback host in his own right as well. Although I suppose if you're comparing talkback hosts, I would be Sash and Tendulkar to your Craig Cumming. Yeah, it depends whether I'm Don Bradman. But <laughs> I don't think... <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I left the door open. He came charging yeah. through, didn't he? Charging through. He certainly did. All right, Craig, let's talk about Guppy then. So, Marty is out of these squads. Um, in terms of the numbers, he's our best uh, white ball batsman in both forms of the game. Can he come back from this? Is there a door going to be open for him? Yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about that today, actually. And, um, yeah, I think there certainly is. Um, you know, the, the Cricket World Cup's, what, in a year's time, let's say, and still have plenty of cricket to be played. It'll come down to a couple of things. One, Know where the guppy's got that that inner drive um, to to get out there and, and probably play domestic cricket and try and I suppose force the selectors and remind them you know of what Martin Guppel can do. Um, you know we still want to pick our best side to go away and win a one day tournament. So um, you know body wise, mind wise, it, it comes down to those two things and um, his drive to to push hard because you know he's been in a position and you just mentioned that um, our greatest white ball cricketer he's he's been always picked. Um, and he's always performed. So it's a new situation for, for Guppy and a really tough one. I, I hope he does because, again, we want to have the best players available. Uh, Finn Allen's still unproven uh, at that level in one-day cricket against quality opposition where Martin's history shows that what he's done. So um, I certainly don't think the door's shut at all, and I, I sort of hope that he, he gets a bit of fire in the belly and he's willing to, to work really hard and, and try and earn that spot back because he's certainly got still got to be good enough. Okay. Lachlan, microphone on, because Locke has said uh, on the program already that uh, you don't think Guppy's been informed for a hell of a long time. So you explain that to Craig. I just think the numbers show that he hasn't been performing that well the last maybe year. So that's a my year? Okay. Would it, uh, do you agree, Craig? Does it go back a year? Yeah, probably. Uh, I think so. He's battled injuries as well, time. though. He's had a few injuries. Yeah, and it's been a tough time where they didn't play a lot of one-day cricket. Um, you know, after the World Cup, you know, there was a, obviously with COVID and, and a break. So... In some ways, he might be a victim of, of COVID and the fact that he didn't get to play a lot of cricket and a lot of rhythm, and he had some injuries, you're right, and, you know, just lost that rhythm. And he still scored runs, but maybe we weren't playing the greatest of opposition, and uh, the runs he scored, he'd sort of, he sort of became an all-or-nothing. He seemed to got got 100, um, and against some of the smaller nations, all missed out, yeah. um, and, and getting those numbers in between. So, yeah, I'd agree with that. I, you know me, Marty, I, I also, with Guppy, I, I actually look at his technique, and... To me, I've I watched a lot of him play. I've commentated a lot. And I think there's a couple of things. When he he's, he has a little bit of a tendency, and, and if he was listening to this, he'd probably go, shut up, Craig. Bloody hell, Craig, you always going on about this. But he sometimes slices across the ball a wee bit. And I, and I mean, basically, as his bat blade comes from first slip to mid on. And when he's playing really well, and I always go back to an innings he played in Sydney, he got 100 against Australia. When his hands go through the ball and follow where the ball's going, that's when Martin Gupta, I think, is in form. And um, at times he gets challenged um, around when the ball moves a wee bit and then mm -hmm. we slice comes in. And, I, and I've just, I reckon he's had that again for the last year or so. And, you know, to me, I, I, I always, you know, again, I go back to, because I commentated him a lot and I actually did a lot of stuff on, you know, video and looked at a lot. And one time he actually came up and, and looked at what we were, we were talking about. Right. If he can get, get those hands going through the ball, and it's really simple in that, when we make contact with the ball, if we're hitting it to mid-off, we want our hands to go to mid-off. If we're hitting it through the covers, our hands go through the covers. Whereas Guppy at times, are just when, he, when he's trying to maybe overhit and um, out of form, his hands are coming more from first slip through to mid-on. And when the ball goes through mid-off, it's more of a slice. And I reckon if he can get that back, that, the old Martin Gupp comes back because he plays the ball later um, and he actually um, he opens up in more areas to play. So to me, that would be one area. Again, people say Craig and his bloody technique. But no, 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 man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really seeing it. I'm seeing what you're doing. I'm, yeah, because look, I, th yeah, I thought the same. I, I thought the same, mate. During the Chapel Hadley series, there was, I think it was the second one, and maybe well, you'll you'll know. But it was one of those awful ones where the feet were just stuck, and he flayed it. So it might have even been the first one. He flayed it something outside off that was wide, and he didn't have to. Oh, it was the second one, Locke, saying. Yeah, it, and it was just yeah, that yeah, shot, well, and I've yeah. seen it so often. It's just that he was set. As soon as Guppy hits a straight drive, all of a sudden he's on, right? Yeah, well, it's a straight drive because you've got to play a nice straight drive. You've got to have your hands going through the ball to where the ball's coming from or where you want it to go. And Yeah, I mean, the other day, half volley's a half volley. And, 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 hey, sometimes, Marty, we don't like to do it. You know, old father time can catch up and our eyes are a bit slower, and, and those things do happen. But I, I still see with him, part of it's just rhythm. Um Hasn't played a lot of cricket. Um, you know, it's very hard when you're just playing T20s to try and get any real rhythm in your game. Um, hopefully he can come back to white ball cricket. I mean, domestic cricket's about to go into the one-day campaign and the T20 campaign. And it's a great opportunity for Guppy to remind us, you know, what he can do, but also probably just gain a bit of confidence himself. And 
if he does that, he puts himself well back up there. But again, I, I just, you know, I, I base that on having commentated him for probably you sure. know, seven years and at a time when he played exceptionally well. And I always used to bring it up in commentary today. Yes, I think Martin Gupt was on and I could, I could tell. And I know he's worked on it as well. It's not something that's new to him. And that would just be one thing. Try and find that. And I reckon when he finds that, he finds his rhythm and he starts playing. He plays. He gets higher execution with less risk, so okay. to speak. I don't need to see him stand there and try and bang the ball over long on in one-day cricket. He'll do that once he gets going. But that first 20 or 30 balls, if he's got his hands going nicely um, and he's got his rhythm, then, then he'll be 20 or 30 off 30 with no with ease. And then... Then he can put the foot Yeah, down I mean, that's the thing. I mean, Craig Cumming is with us. We're talking about Marty Guptill um, being dropped from the Black Caps. And he was, remember, uh, part of the Chapel Hadley series. And then he went over the T20 World Cup. And he didn't play in that because uh, Finnellan's taken that spot. Let's not forget also, Craig, that when he was at his most belligerent best, it's 2015 in the One Day World Cup here. That's seven years ago now. How much changes in terms of, look, you, you know, you, he's not an old man, but how much changes in terms of just your eye-hand coordination, seeing that ball move it? Because it's a split-second game. Does it really alter that much over that period of time? Yeah, the problem is we don't test that, Marty. It's a good point you make. Um, and, and, of course, it has to happen because... You know, we get a bit older, we get a bit slower, our movements get a bit slower. But someone like Gupti, you don't see him in the field, he's still got fast twitch fibres and um, those things. But yeah, I mean, it might have an impact, but you can't underestimate confidence. Right. Um, confidence <clears> is the biggest thing, and we talk about that often. And, you know, being able to tell, you know, this is the role, but he's not just a basher of the ball. He's not a guy that just goes out and clubs his way to 100. Martin Gupti is, you know, in white door cricket has been, he's got craft to his game. So he's got more than just standing there and delivering. He's... He, when he plays the best is when he strikes the ball, he's got that full blade. You know, he, he's got genuine craft to the way he plays. And in some ways, he might have lost that because they just played a lot of T20 cricket. Um, and that's what he can go back to find when he plays domestic cricket is that craft and that little bit of that soft skills and hitting gaps and rotating the strike. And, and then, I mean, his ball striking ability. No, I mean, he, he'll still be able to hit the ball to the moon and the nets, I bet you. So that, that's still there. It's just that other stuff. And, Throwing the word confidence, and um, you know, I think you've still got a you've got a guy you know wanting to compete at the very top, and also be successful at the top. Okay, Craig, coming with us, and just kind of finally on this, you know, can you really? I mean, look, I, I'm I'm just doubtful whether the domestic cricket is the stepping stone to the side. It seems that once you're in, it's a hell of a lot harder to get out, and once you're out, it's almost impossible to get back in. I mean, can you really play you know against ND or against Wellington or whatever? Smack some balls around against bowlers that aren't that same quality, and expect to get back in the side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they've shown that. I, I think, um, yeah, it is hard. But, you know, the selectors are exceptionally loyal, and that's a good thing because you get opportunities. But, you know, if he knocks the numbers down, like Martin Guptill plays domestic cricket for Auckland and uh, in the one-day campaign, and he gets his form. I mean, he's not only going to put up numbers, Marty. I mean, he's going to get 130s, 140s. And, and because he's got such a great history, I mean, I looked at a 7,500, I think, thousand one-day runs. Yeah, it's ridiculous, mate. He's had 100... 198 games, um, his average, which we know you now know, is at 41. I mean, the, the guy's got 1800s and 3950s, which means every three and a half times he walks out the bat, he gets over 50 um, yeah, in international yeah. cricket. So, yeah. so he's he's still got a lot of, I don't know, rocks in the in the in the bank, so to speak, and it won't take much. And now the pressure's on, you know, someone, you know, like Finn Allen. But Finn Allen is more of a basher of the ball. He's more of a hard hitter of the ball and, and a one pace player. Whereas, you know, I think Guppy still has a lot of craft. So, yeah, I think he can. And as I say, if anyone can, uh, because he's not a guy to go out and get 80 off 80. When he has a good day, Martin Guptill can get 104. He got a double 100 in that World Cup. I mean, still one of the greatest innings you ever watch um, against the West Indies. So that's still there. And, and I hope I hope he does, because we need that in our game. And I, I like him in the field, too. I like what he brings. He brings a bit of... Re- oh, two, two, you know, two, two quick questions. His most magnificent innings, I believe, was it against South Africa and Hamilton. Remember that? I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday yes. night. He, and he got about 160 or 70 or something ridiculous. But he, he was against a, a fearsome South African attack. And he smacked them all over the joint. And I think from memory, I think I interviewed him after that, he'd just come back from injury. Yes. Um, I think he'd done his hammy and, and he came back and played that innings. And the other thing is, I don't know, I, I, I sort of also think, I mean... If you think of someone like Martin Guptill and, you know, the confidence that he's been, he's lost his best mate, Ross Taylor, being Yeah, in the that's a good room. point. And, yeah, and, I don't, point. and I don't know, you know, when you play the game of cricket, you also want to play with your mates and you play with people that you... And, and sometimes Ross might have had a little trigger for him. Ross might have had a little word that, you know, or a little conversation at dinner when they're on tour that just helped them, and he's lost that. So maybe that's also another wee factor that he, he's just lost one of his, you know, best mates not playing in the team, and... You know, when we lose our best mates from any part of our lives, in work or environment, 
you know, the day's a little bit different. Yeah, and, right. and maybe that's also got a little part. I don't know, mate. That's, no, it's yeah, fickle. It's a little yeah. straw. Yeah, but, no, but, fickle. But, but, but honestly, you know, it's true. It's All right, true. now this bit I'm going to leave clean because I want an answer because it's going to come back to haunt you, okay? Uh, Arsenal, the real deal. Uh, is your team oh, legit? Man. You're 12-1-1. One, and one. The only loss was to United. You are five points clear going into the break. Eh? Is the title yours already? Well, as they say, Marty, in the last 13 years, if you're leading at Christmas time, you win the tournament. Uh, Ten times that's happened. The other three times, actually, when the city's got up. But, mate, I, you might as well just call it now. I mean, we are on top. <laughs> and, you know, there's a... What a worst time. What a horrible, horrible time to have a football World Cup. Yeah, mate. Ridiculous. When you've got momentum, everything's going nice. I mean, I know you don't call him Jesus, but I call him Jesus because at the moment, you know, if you've got Jesus inside, you're going to win, aren't you? Yeah. No, you're playing well, mate. And the and the, the deal is you're winning games. The winning away at Wolves, not easy. Winning away at Chelsea, not, these are not easy. You don't get a gimme game in the Premier League, mate. So to win 12 out of 14... Is outrageous. All right, we'll leave yeah, the turn, mate. You've got a big coaching gig. Thanks, mate. Okay, see you, Craig. It's Craig. Mc... I was going to say Craig McMillan. It's Craig coming with us.